With a 12 core Zen 5 CPU paired up with an RTX GPU, this 13 inch OLED laptop is turning out to be a really awesome little machine. Hey, what's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the all new ASUS ProArt PX13. This is their brand new 2024 model and we do have a Zen 5 APU. In fact, we've got the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 paired up with an RTX GPU. I've had my eye on this since ASUS announced it earlier this year at Computex, and this isn't specifically a gaming laptop, but I'll tell you, we've got more than enough power to game with this thing. It's geared more towards creative professionals like digital artists, graphic designers, video editors, and content creators. And now that we've got Ryzen AI in this with those Zen 5 cores, this thing is turning out to be a really good small form factor laptop for when you're on the go. And don't let the size fool you. I mean, this thing is putting down some serious performance. When it comes to the overall aesthetic, you can see we've got a sleek black design. This is actually known as their nano black coating. It's smudge resistant, and not to mention the whole laptop itself is military grade. It's been through the military standard 810H test. So humidity, drop test, altitude test, you name it, they've tested it, it has passed. And the new PX13 isn't just a laptop, it's actually convertible. So we can fold this all the way over. And with this 3K OLED touch panel, you could use it just like a tablet. Other than that, we do have this chiclet style backlit keyboard and you might notice we've got a little dial section on that trackpad and that's because this is the new ASUS dial pad. We can actually use this to control different functions on the laptop and we'll actually take a closer look in just a second. But one of my favorite things here is the OLED display. 13.3 inch 3K, so we've got a resolution of 2880 by 1800. It is an OLED, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 0 0.2 millisecond response time, and this one here has a 60 hertz refresh rate. I was really hoping to see 120 on this unit, but they kept the 60 on this. Up to 500 nits of brightness, 100% DCI-P3. It supports HDR True Black 500, and it is Pantone validated. Now, just to give you an idea about the size of the new PX13, on the left-hand side, I've got my 15.6 inch gaming laptop. This is my gaming slash work laptop. This is the one I carry around everywhere I go. I mentioned that I've had my eye on the PX13 since Computex, and this is the main reason. I mean, super small form factor here. It's got plenty of power for all the work I need to do on it. And then when I'm done, I can actually game on it. And the weight of the PX13 is coming in at 3.04 pounds. And when it comes to I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got our power input. This does come with a 200-watt power supply, full-size HDMI 2.1 port, USB 4, and the 3.5mm headphone jack. Over on the left-hand side, power button, micro SD UH2 card reader, USB 3.2 Gen 2 full-size port there, and another USB 4 port. And both of these USB 4 ports run at a 40 gig protocol. Next thing I wanted to talk about here was the new dial pad, and this has come in really handy. And to tell you the truth, I mean, if you don't want to use it for anything but controlling the volume or brightness, you can actually just set it up there using their software. But it kind of gives you a really nice little shortcut in creative apps, productivity apps, or even media apps. And before we take a look at the overall specs, I wanted to talk about these shortcut keys. Now, obviously, with all of these newer laptops, we're getting that co-pilot button. But up here, we've got a dedicated button for the ProArt Creator Hub. So basically from here, we can download new apps, but one of the main things in here is actually choosing your color profile for the display. We can also adjust performance. But with these newer ASUS OLED panels, we've got a lot of adjustability here. So if you wanted kind of warmer tones, you could go that way with it. There are some pre-made profiles that you could also add to this if you need to. ASUS does offer a couple different variants of the PX13 over on their website, but the one I have here has the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370 APU. With this, we get 12 cores, 24 threads, and remember, we've got 4 Zen 5 cores and 8 Zen 5C cores, and the Zen 5C cores are basically efficiency cores. And this APU will do up to 5.1 gigahertz. We've also got the new XDNA NPU up to 50 tops of AI performance, or total package performance when factoring in the CPU and iGPU along with the NPU, up to 80 tops of performance. With this new Zen 5 APU, we've got the brand new Radeon 890M iGPU, and this is based on RDNA 3.5 with 16 CUs. On the iGPU side, I mean, you can definitely game on it. I've done a couple of videos showing it off at lower wattages and higher wattages, but the PX13 that we have here also has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4050. They also have a 4060 variant over on their website. 
6 gigs of gddr 6 VRAM, and this will do up to 95 watts. We've also got 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM running at 7500 megahertz, 1 terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, and this is a PCIe 4.0 drive, 60 hertz 3K OLED display. This also has Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.2, 73 watt hour battery, and the total weight on this is coming in at 3.04 pounds. Moving in a bit closer so we can get a better look at everything, main claim to fame here is going to be that AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370, 12 cores, 24 threads, and this has been an amazing performer. Based on Zen 5, and we've got some Zen 5C cores, which are basically the efficiency cores. 32 gigs of LPDDR5X at 7500 megahertz. We've also got access to that new Radeon 890M for regular use and low-end gaming. It's actually a pretty decent performer. But with this ProArt model that I have here, we've got that GeForce RTX 4050, 6 gigs of VRAM. It's not the most powerful GPU on the market, but it does really well at 1080p. Everything across the board I've been able to do at 1080 Ultra settings without an issue. And there is a lot of tuning that we can do with this system using the ProArt Creator Hub. This is basically Armory Crate for these uh, ProArt laptops. Color control right over here. So we can fully control that OLED panel. You can get it to look exactly how you want. Work smart. Task group. So we can set up different applications. So it knows that we want to use more of the CPU and GPU per application. Control settings. Performance optimization. It'll give us a look at everything running right now. But from the main dashboard, if we move over a bit here, you can see for our GPU mode, standard, eco, optimized. And just a bit further, we've got our performance settings. Windows mode, so that's going to rely on the Windows Power Profile. Whisper mode, very low TDP there using the iGPU. Standard mode, this will switch back and forth between the iGPU and the DGPU. They've also incorporated a performance mode, but my favorite thing here is the manual tuning. So if we open this up, you can see we've got our CPU and our GPU. Our SPL, which is going to be our continuous TDP on that new Ryzen AI chip, 65 watts. It'll boost for two minutes up to 70 watts and our FPPT, which I believe is either 10 or 20 seconds, 85 watts. Plus, we've got a fan curve that we can control here. And moving over to our GPU, base clock offset, a little bit of overclocking here on the memory and the core clock. Thermal target, keep that fan profile down. Total graphics power or TGP, 85 watts, but we've also got a dynamic boost of an extra 10 watts. And for this, wanted to give you a look here. So right now we're in standard mode with it. GPU power, 63, 64 watts. But as soon as I go to max mode here, you'll see this jump up almost to 100 watts, which is pretty crazy. So we've got that thermal target there. And as soon as it starts going up close to that, it will bring that wattage down. But we can definitely get the maximum performance out of this RTX 4050 with this unit. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. And with Geekbench 6, this chip is doing really good. Single core, 2,880. Multi, 15,106. I also ran the multi-core test in Cinebench R24, and this is in performance mode. We got a total score of 1,210. And if you take a look down the list, this is coming far ahead of even the desktop variant of the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. Of course, that's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. We're working with a 12-core, 24-thread. But going from that desktop variant with a much higher TDP to this mobile and seeing just how much it's pulling ahead is pretty amazing. And now we're moving over to some GPU benchmarks. Remember, we're just taking a look at the RTX 4050 in this unit. Fire Strike coming in with a strong 18,575. And the last one I ran here was Time Spy, 7,878. Graphics score right there, a little over 7,400. So yeah, with these synthetic benchmarks, this thing's doing pretty good given the form factor. And that's really one of my main draws to this unit, that 13 inch display. I mean, this thing is really compact, but I also wanted to test out some gaming here because we do have that RTX card and I think it'll do a pretty good job at 1080p. First up, Fortnite, 1080p, epic. Going into this, I knew we'd have a pretty decent time with this game here. I mean, there's a ton that can run on this RTX 4050 just fine. And if you wanted to up the resolution, you definitely can, but you might need to drop some of those settings down to high.
Checking out Helldivers 2 1080p Ultra, DLSS is set to quality and we're seeing an average of around 77 FPS. Performance is quite nice, it's very playable, and if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, our temps are really decent given that we've got a very small form factor unit. And one of the reasons being, you know, with this RTX 4050, I showed you that we can actually go up to around 94 watts with it with that boost enabled. But with these settings that I have here, that GPU is only pulling up to around 47 watts. Next on the list, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 using the built-in benchmark 1080p, high settings, and DLSS is set to balanced. I actually don't think we really need DLSS with this game, but at the end of the benchmark, we actually had an average of 139 FPS, and our 1% lows were 65. Average of around 132 FPS, and I know for a fact that this RTX 4050, especially paired up with this newer CPU, can run this game at 1440. In the past, I've tested this on another laptop with an older Ryzen chip at 1440p over HDMI, and we actually saw an average of around 83 FPS. Same settings here, very high, so these older games, you're definitely going to be able to play at those higher resolutions maxed out. One thing I love about these 4000 series NVIDIA cards is the fact that a lot of these newer games do support frame generation. So we're using NVIDIA's frame gen right here with Spider-Man Remastered 1080p, very high, no DLSS, and even with frame generation off, we're seeing averages in the mid 60s. But I really do love the fact that even on this lower end RTX 4050, we can still enable it and almost double our frame rate. Here's another one that supports NVIDIA's frame gen. We're at 1080p, very high, average of around 94 FPS with this game, and it's definitely the newest one in the list right now. Really awesome performance, and with no DLSS, we're still seeing that really nice frame rate there. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p using the Ultra preset, and with that Ultra preset, it does turn on DLSS, sets it to auto. Looking about quality here, given that we're at 1080p, a really playable experience, over 100 FPS on average. The last thing I wanted to talk about here was battery life, and remember, we've got that 73 watt hour battery. Using PC Mark 10's battery life test in performance mode, screen brightness at 50%, Video playback netted 9 hours, 23 minutes. The Microsoft Office test, 10 hours, 6 minutes. And gaming, given that we've got a DGPU here, 1 hour and 7 minutes. Of course, in balanced mode or even whisper mode, you could net more out of each of these tests, but what we're looking at here isn't all that bad. Overall, love the design of the new ProArt PX13. I think the sleek black that they chose to use is great. Military grade, they've gone through the plethora of tests here. I don't think that these 13 inch laptops with DGPUs get enough love and I think that this is the perfect form factor for travel. Of course, it's not for everybody and if you're strictly looking for a gaming laptop, I would skip this, but if you've got a dual purpose in mind, like getting work done with creative apps or you know, if you're a content creator and then you wanna game on that same machine so you don't have to carry two around when you're traveling, then this would be a perfect little setup for you. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about the ProArt PX13, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.